Ever wondered what life on death row looks like? Ever pondered the stories behind those who await their final hour? Welcome to the world that exists behind the cold iron bars of prison cells, where men and women, young and old, count down their remaining days. This world is as real as ours, yet it's a world that many of us cannot fathom. It is a world where the concept of time takes on a whole new meaning, where each tick of the clock echoes the rhythm of a life hanging in the balance. Today we're going to pull back the curtain on this grim reality, unmasking the stories that lurk in the shadows of our justice system. We'll delve into the lives of those who've been sentenced to the most severe punishment the law can impose, death. We'll journey into the heart of San Quentin, California, a place that's home to the state's male death row inmates. Within its walls, we'll uncover tales of tension, truth, and perhaps even redemption. Our journey doesn't stop there. We'll explore the controversial topic of juvenile death sentences, unearthing the legal, ethical, and emotional dimensions of this troubling issue. We'll hear the voices of those who were just teenagers when they were handed their fate, their youth stolen by a gavel strike. We'll sit down with inmates, listening to their stories, their regrets, and their hopes. We'll strive to understand their pasts, their crimes, and the human side of those who live each day under the shadow of execution. We'll also shed light on the compassionate work of hospice volunteers who provide end-of-life care to those on death row and the emotional challenges they face. And finally, we'll follow the stories of prisoners seeking salvation and transformation, questioning if forgiveness can coexist with justice. We'll highlight the efforts of individuals and organizations advocating for changes to the death penalty system. Prepare to delve into the grim reality of death row where life hangs by a thread. This is a journey that will challenge our perspectives, our preconceptions, and perhaps even our sense of justice. Welcome to San Quentin, home to California's male death row inmates. San Quentin, a name that's become synonymous with the grim reality of the American penal system, a place where the condemned await their fates, often for decades on end. Here, life is a paradox, an existence that's both stagnant and fleeting, caught in the relentless march of time. The prison, nestled in the picturesque Bay Area of California, paints a stark contrast to the lives led within its walls. A world away from the bustling metropolis of San Francisco, San Quentin houses over 700 men sentenced to death. Each one carries a story, a past and a sentence that's etched into the fabric of their existence. Inside these walls the air is heavy with an array of emotions, fear, anger, regret, and even hope, they all coexist in this space of contradictions. The prison's narrow corridors echo with the footsteps of those who tread a path from which there's no return. Through the cell's iron bars, one can glimpse the human side of these inmates. They are not just numbers or case files, but individuals who've made grave mistakes. Some grapple with remorse, others with acceptance, but all live under the looming shadow of the ultimate punishment. The daily grind in San Quentin is a stark reminder of the cost of freedom. The mundane tasks, the rigid routines, the lack of privacy, it's a life stripped of its essence. Yet amidst this bleak existence, there are glimmers of humanity that shine through. Inmates engage in self-improvement programs, pursue education, and even contribute to prison publications. These activities, while seemingly ordinary, offer a sliver of normalcy in an otherwise grim reality. They are testament to the indomitable human spirit that strives to find meaning, even in the direst of circumstances. But let's not forget, San Quentin is a place where hope fades and time stands still. It's a world that exists within our own, yet feels miles apart, a place where the finality of justice is served, but at what cost? As we delve deeper into the lives of those within its walls, we are forced to question the very nature of punishment, justice, and humanity. San Quentin, a place where hope fades and time stands still. What happens when the hands of time stop for those barely out of childhood? It's a question that has haunted the corridors of justice for decades. Imagine being 16 again, navigating the labyrinth of adolescence, dealing with the growing pains of becoming an adult. Now picture being thrust into a world where your every mistake is magnified and the harshest penalty is imposed. The juvenile death penalty is a contentious topic, fraught with moral, legal, and emotional complexities. Let's delve into the story of Nathan, who at 17 was convicted of a crime he maintains he did not commit. His pleas of innocence fell on deaf ears, and he was sentenced to death. The weight of his sentence, the reality of his impending death, is a burden he carries with him every day. 
It's a tragic narrative, one that underscores the controversy surrounding juvenile death penalties. Then we have the case of Anthony, who was just 15 when he made a decision that would forever alter his life. His crime was heinous, there's no denying that. But should a single act define a person's entire existence especially when that person is still a child? Both these stories force us to question the ethics of the juvenile death penalty. Should we as a society be comfortable with the idea of condemning our youth to death? Are we not obligated to provide them with a chance at redemption, rehabilitation and growth? These are not easy questions to answer. The debate continues to rage on pitting the demand for justice against the plea for mercy. Amidst this ongoing dialogue we must remember that at the heart of it all are young lives hanging in the balance. The question remains, justice served or innocence lost? This is the paradox that confronts us as we grapple with the reality of youth on death row. It's a reality that continues to challenge our sense of justice, our understanding of right and wrong, and our belief in the inherent worth of every individual. Behind every prisoner, there's a story waiting to be told. Today, we delve into the lives of those who wait on death row. Each one of them has a past, a narrative of the events that led them to this point. Some stories are shrouded in violence, others in desperation, but, within these walls they all share a common thread, the looming specter of the death sentence. We've had the chance to sit down with a few of these individuals to hear their stories firsthand. We've listened to them recount their pasts, the choices they've made, the moments they wish they could take back. Some shared tales of broken homes, of lost opportunities, of paths taken that led them astray. Others spoke of moments of weakness, of lapses in judgment that changed their lives forever. Their crimes are undeniable, their guilt indisputable. Yet as they speak, we're reminded of the complexity of the human condition. We hear the remorse in their voices, the longing for redemption. They speak of regrets, of lessons learned too late, of a desire to turn back the hands of time. But here on death row, time only moves in one direction. For these inmates, the future holds not promise but an end. Yet even in the face of this harsh reality, we find glimmers of hope. We hear them speak of dreams unfulfilled, of a desire to make amends, to leave a positive mark however small, on the world they'll leave behind. Their words, their stories serve as a mirror to our own humanity. They remind us that behind the crimes, behind the prison walls, there are human beings. Flawed, yes, guilty undeniably. But humans nonetheless capable of remorse, capable of change. These voices from the shadows serve as a stark reminder of our shared humanity. Even amidst despair, there exists a beacon of compassion. This is the reality of hospice care on death row, where the final chapter of an inmate's life is met with empathy and dignity. Here in the darkest corners of our society the human spirit shines brightly illuminating the path for those nearing the end of their journey. Hospice volunteers often fellow inmates trained to provide end-of-life care, step into this challenging role with a profound sense of dedication. They shoulder the weight of helping those condemned to die, not in solitude but with a comforting presence. They are the unsung heroes, offering a soft landing in a world hardened by crime and punishment. These volunteers navigate an emotional minefield, balancing their own feelings with the needs of those they care for. They face the stark reality of death on a daily basis, yet they do so with unwavering compassion. They hold hands that have caused harm, they listen to stories of regret, and they offer comfort in moments of fear. This is not a job for the faint-hearted, but one that requires an extraordinary depth of empathy and resilience. The connections formed in these circumstances are deeply human, transcending the confines of prison walls. Through shared silence, whispered confessions and tears shed, a bond is formed that is as profound as it is poignant. These moments of connection, in the face of impending death, offer a glimmer of hope, a testament to the enduring power of the human spirit. This is a world where kindness becomes the most potent force, an antidote to the harsh reality of death row where the line between the caregiver and the dying blurs, revealing a shared humanity that is often overlooked in discussions about capital punishment. In this realm of shadows, hospice care on death row serves as a stark reminder of our shared mortality and the power of compassion. It teaches us that even in the final moments, there is room for empathy, for connection, for kindness. In the face of death, kindness shines the brightest. Can a wrongdoer find redemption in remorse and repentance? As we delve into this complex question we uncover stories of prisoners seeking salvation and transformation. In the depths of despair and darkness, 
Some inmates seek a path towards redemption. They grapple with guilt, remorse, and the weight of their past actions. They yearn for forgiveness, not just from others but from themselves. It's a formidable journey, laden with introspection, growth, and often, spiritual awakening. Consider the story of a man, incarcerated for a crime committed in the heat of a moment. Years later he describes a profound transformation, a journey from anger and denial towards acceptance and remorse. He speaks of a newfound faith that guides him, a beacon in the starkness of his existence, or the narrative of a woman whose youthful recklessness led to a fatal accident. She recounts her journey towards understanding the gravity of her actions and the pain they caused. She shares her efforts to make amends, to somehow balance the scales of justice from within her prison cell. These stories raise profound questions. Can a person truly change? And if they can, what does that mean for our concept of justice? Can remorse and repentance lead to redemption? And if they do, what place does that leave for punishment? Forgiveness in this context becomes a complex concept. It's not just about the victim or their loved ones offering pardon, it's also about society's capacity to accept that people can change, that they can learn from their mistakes, and that even those who commit grave wrongs have the potential for redemption. Yet, forgiveness does not negate the need for justice. It's not about forgetting the crime or absolving the criminal. It's about recognizing the potential for change and growth, even in the most unlikely places. In the quest for justice, where does forgiveness fit in? It's a challenging question, one that forces us to confront our beliefs about right, wrong, and the capacity for change. Ultimately, it's a question that asks us to reflect on the kind of society we want to be, one that punishes indefinitely or one that believes in the power of second chances. Change is afoot as voices rise against the death penalty. Advocacy and activism play a crucial role in challenging this system, casting light on its dark corners and questioning the very principles it's built on. Among these voices, individuals and organizations tirelessly advocate for change. From grassroots activists to legal experts, these crusaders work on multiple fronts. They investigate wrongful convictions, push for legal reforms, and strive to educate the public about the realities of capital punishment. Consider the Innocence Project, a non-profit legal organization committed to exonerating the wrongly convicted, many of whom languish on death row. Their work has led to the exoneration of over 375 innocent people since their inception in 1992. Then there's Equal Justice Initiative led by Brian Stevenson, a powerful voice in the fight against the death penalty. This organization provides legal representation to prisoners who may have been denied a fair trial. Their work has resulted in reversals, relief or release for over 140 wrongly condemned prisoners on death row. These organizations, among others, are not just fighting individual cases. They're challenging the entire system, its inherent biases, and its potential for irreversible errors. They're pushing against a tide of public opinion, against deeply entrenched beliefs about crime and punishment. They're also fighting in the courts, navigating complex legal battles to expose flaws in the system. They're advocating for policy changes, seeking to influence lawmakers and shape legislation that could alter the future of the death penalty. Their efforts are not in vain. They've sparked critical conversations about justice, fairness, and the value of human life. They've brought about tangible changes, with states like New Mexico, Illinois, and Connecticut abolishing the death penalty in the past decade. The fight for justice continues, and so does the debate around the death penalty. It's a complex, emotionally charged issue, but these advocates are determined to keep pushing, keep questioning, and keep fighting for a world where justice does not mean a death sentence. As we traverse these stories we are left with more questions than answers. We've journeyed through the cold halls of San Quentin, peered into the lives of those sentenced to death as mere youths. We've sat across from inmates, hearing their confessions, their regrets, their hopes. We've witnessed the compassionate care provided by hospice workers on death row, and grappled with the concepts of forgiveness, salvation, and second chances. We've met those advocating tirelessly for change in the death penalty system. Each narrative has revealed layers of complexity, shedding light on the human sides of these issues. It's a stark reminder that behind every statistic, there's a life, a story. We invite you now to reflect on these stories, the death penalty, and the intertwining issues of justice, mercy, and redemption. What are your thoughts on these stories and the death penalty? Share your views in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe and like the video.